you know something different? Because I noticed something different. Hey girl, hey girl, hey, how you doing? It be me, it be my me, hello. And if you haven't noticed, our backdrop looks a little different because we are in our own space. I'm really excited to be in my own space. I finally feel like I can put out the content I've really been wanting to do, including this video today, so I'm really excited about that. I just not haven't been consistent because my bedroom and my mom's place was really calm, you know, a little clustered spot. I feel like I couldn't record any time I wanted. I finally get to put out the things that I want to do and do the content that I want to do. So I'm super excited. Okay. Also, I want to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Maya. Hello, 245 subscribers. I was not expecting these many subscribers over the past couple days. So, hi, <laughs> um, nice to meet you. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. I appreciate it very much. Okay, now. Cut the cameras. Dead ass. So the people who have not been subscribing to me, but they've been watching my videos, like, How I get 1,000 views on a video, but I don't got 1,000 subscribers? This is what causes me to lay up at night and just cry because like, why would you like me? Why am I not good enough for you, okay? Like. But yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. I deeply appreciate it and share. Tell your friends all about me. Our video is gonna be a little different. I'm really excited to do this kind of thing I wanted to try out for a really long time, which is like a get ready with me. But I'm not a makeup kind of girl. I like to wear makeup, but I can't do a tutorial because I only know how to do makeup on my face and maybe occasional another person's face on like a rare day. But I wanna do a get ready with me, but commission edition. Kinda of just wanna just vibe and paint and paint this commission, but talk to you guys a little bit. If you haven't been following me on social media, here's my Instagram right here, you should go give me a follow. But yeah, there's that. So, I feel like I'm talking a lot, so yeah. Let's get into it. I think another pretty cool thing about commissions, I get this question a lot on Instagram is, you know, what, like, how do you get commissions? How do you get people to want to buy artwork? And I think it's more so of like promoting not only your, not only promoting your art, but yourself. For some people, they could just promote their art. Like, there are some people who are very successful and they can just promote their art and it's nothing and you don't even have to ever see their face, like ever. But I think there's a sense of authenticity when you see the artist. And I find like people like CJ Henry or you know, um, Murakami, where you can see the artists and you know their story, you know where they're from, and you can see who you're representing. It's, you know, that social media presence does something to the art. It does something for the artist and their presence. I'm sorry there's so much noise in my background if you hear anything, but um, <laughs> I have like a side street and they're turning up because it's summertime still for them. And all the kids are home. It's remote not how that goes but yeah i think it it takes it, it's an authentic engagement along with being present and actively posting your art and actively posting your art with enthusiasm too like there are some people who kind of just post their art and they really you can tell that it was haphazard and i know that when i used to post things that were really haphazard or it wasn't like my best work i didn't get the best uh I didn't get the best reactions to it. Like, my engagements were really low for it because you can tell I didn't care. And, or it was just like, I'm just posting to post. While when it's something that I'm actually really proud of, that got way more engagement because I was actually proud of the piece. And I was like, yeah, like, I really love this. And I think that makes a difference as well. And I think you shouldn't be creating art that you hate. <laughs> like, there's, there's going to be times where we don't make, like what we make. There's always going to be times like that, but there's also times where you are just going through the process of growing as an artist and that's something completely different from just, you know, hating what you make and making to make for clout or making to make to be noticed. I think that's something way different than making for enjoyment, making to create and making with purpose. And then when you put it out to the world, the world consumes it. You know, there's different fields for everything. 
But there are certain fields of art where you are pretty much just a commissioned artist, where your work, your style is commissioned to make for other people. And there is creative freedom in it because they have they want your special touch on it. But then in the same extent, it's not like, you know, your own independent piece that you happen to make in someone's mind, you know? So, I mean, it's different for different folks. But to get commissions, it does take you getting putting yourself out there and putting your artwork out there and not being scared. You know, not being scared to take certain commissions too. Because we also, we have moments where we do challenge ourselves. And uh, we underestimate ourselves or we don't think we're deserving. So when those opportunities come in the door, we're like, oh my God, no, I'm not qualified to do this project. I've had those moments sometimes. I've even had moments where I declined commissions or I tried to tell people like, hey, this is not my field. This is not what I do. And I think there was only one time where I actually did a commission that I knew that what the person was asking for wasn't in my forte. And I told them that, and then they tried to insult me and insisted like, no, I want it artsy, blah, blah, blah. And I do it the way that, that they're asking to do it. And they said some really derogatory things and just like tried to also rip me off of my money. <laughs> like one thing you can't do is sit and be decked out in designer on social media and then try to play like, oh yeah, I don't got money. Like, yeah, you do. Let me my money. <laughs> but also, um, I guess like I just... I tried to like tell them and they ended up wanting something that was completely one, just so unprofessional and just really tacky in my personal opinion. And two, you know, just not knowing or not accepting the fact that I'm sending you somewhere else because I know what kind of person you are. And I think with commissions, you gotta know the customer. You gotta not know them personally, but if you follow them on social media, if they're a friend or a family member, you kind of get an idea of what they're into, or you kind of get an idea of their vibe or what they're looking for. And maybe it's like an unconscious bias. Well, no, I don't think it's unconscious bias. I think it's just really reading the room and reading the customer and reading what they're asking for and listening to their words very, very keen, like not very keen, listening to their words very closely and listening to what they're asking for. Because I, I definitely, have had scenarios where I when I after I got finished speaking thoroughly with a customer they're like oh yeah you're not exactly what I'm looking for it's like ah yes and I have artists I can send you to and that's where I send them to my friends or things of that sort and there are people who come through me to go to other people to get commissions because they just need a reference point where it's like I'm the artist friend that they have and it's like okay they may know digital artists so let me go ask which is perfectly fine but commissions takes work. And I think that's one of the most frequent questions that are asked on my Instagram to this day. Like, how do you get commissions from other fellow artists? Um, I'm just going through some questions that I have on my Instagram right now. Kind of chit-chat. Because it's supposed to be a chit-chat, get ready with me commission edition. But I, I guess I'm, I should still be chit-chatting even though I want to vibe out. But I'm still going to let it vibe out because it's still a lot of content to get through to talk through. But I think another question that comes up for me is how do I juggle work, school, and life? Shout out to the ice cream truck with the thing in the back. Sweet summer. But when it comes to juggling work, school, and life, it's hard. And I get this question a lot from younger followers too. A lot of teenagers, young kids, like below the age of 13, 14, or at that age of 13, 14, 15, 16, that, that weird age of teenagehood that's like right in the middle before you get to like that upper high school, college life. It's, it's a learning curve, <laughs> balancing work, school, and life. Um, I think, and art, I think, I think you throw art in there as well and that mix because work, school, and life is one of three separate things within themselves and art is also a part of that. That's the fourth thing. Because when you don't have, when you, when you let work consume everything, you don't, you're kind of struggling and stressed through school and you really don't have a life. Or if you let school consume you, you are really tired and not really doing your best at work and then you still don't have a life. 
Or if you have life consuming everything, you do poorly in school, you don't really have a job, or you're poorly at work, and you're kind of just wasting time. <laughs> like, I, I, I take it as that. Like, you're, you're wasting as time. You're wasting time. So, I would say having a balance really has to do with a lot of self-discipline and checks and balances within yourself. You have to check yourself as a working artist, as a, not even if you're not a working artist, if you're just an artist in general, checking yourself, saying, you know what, I haven't drawn anything in God knows how long. And we, we can't get into this mindset of drawing just to draw. Like, we have to get into the mindset of drawing because this is something you want to do. This is something that, no, I'm sorry, R run that back. <laughs> you can, we got to get out of this habit of drawing because we want the clout and to post. We want to we want to draw just to draw. We have to get back into that that love for drawing, that love for creating without the clout. And I feel like a lot of people, especially in a lot of social media, chase clout or make art for clout and don't authentically create anymore. And we find ourselves in these weird spaces where we are not seeing a lot of authentic artists. And there's this weird stigma that's coming up that's like these artists are stuck up or like women artists are very like bourgeois or whatever. And very male and male artists are really snooty and things like, like these weird stigmas that are coming up, especially for artists who are in the black or Latin community in terms of visual arts and making art. And I think it's so bizarre that that's such a stigma that's present, but it's there. And I think it's important to acknowledge that it's there and to remember when to create authentically and purposefully. And when you're creating, and when you're creating that for yourself, meaning taking pockets out of your day to draw on a sketchbook and not to post on Instagram saying, look what I did today. But for it's a self-fulfilling kind of thing. Because as artists, we're, we're always putting out. We're always putting out art. We're always putting out ourselves. And we're very vulnerable with our art. Our art is a piece of us. When we sell it, we make it it's always a piece of us and when we get into these spaces where we're just like i have to create so i can post on social media and if i do not create i cannot if i do not create for social media i cannot create in general because then i'd be creating for no reason and we forget that the reason to create is you and the reason why you should make is you it shouldn't be for a follow it shouldn't be for um notoriety or anything of that sort it should be because you know what i'm i want to create i want to do and it's so important to just you know have that moment for yourself and it could be your little pocket of peace and be your grounding point to help you manage that work life school balance where you know that in between all of those you have a little pocket for yourself where you're going to doodle a day or that little pocket for yourself where you're going to make sure either you're painting a backdrop or a painting or you're just sketching. Have a book of ideas. Don't even don't even think about a finished product because we, we also get fixated on, like, fixated on a finished product for the painting too. Where we're just like, I can't start something else. I like, know I'll finish it. But when we forget that painting and art is a process and that it's a an ongoing thing, that it doesn't stop it forever. It doesn't start and stop forever where it kind of keeps going as you keep going. And the more you get accustomed to creating freely and getting accustomed to making time for yourself to create freely, you will start to realize that it is a therapeutic process in that same factor. And as for managing school and life and work with all of that, now that's, again, discipline. The same way how creating for yourself and making sure that's a ritual for you is discipline. And finding a balance between those three takes practice because it's never perfect off the first go. Time management and the ability to say no. And I know I'm spitting so many little, little gems here, but you know, it's a chit chat. We never really get to talk about anything because I'm always talking about art supplies. So, you know, we're just gonna just chat. But, you know, I think the ability to say no is such a huge factor in that work life and school balance, work life, school art balance, or whether if art is work, art, school, 
and life balance, the ability to say no. And when I say the ability to say no, it ties back to what I was talking about earlier with saying, you know, there are times where I decline people for commissions. And I had to learn the hard way that after a certain point, I can't take commissions all the time. I need to dedicate a month or so to commissions. Then after that, they will catch me the next time I open up for commissions. And on top of that, I have to limit how many commissions I take in. I saw some of my illustration friends take up the take up the commission space and they were giving slots for commissions. I was like, slots? I'm like, that's so bizarre. But then later on, when I started to get more commissions, I started to realize, ah, I see. I see why there are slots. I see why there are people who are like, okay, I'm opening up slots for five commissions for this month. And it's like, I see now. I see why you did that. And I feel like it's such a good idea. Especially if you are trying to balance everything and let's say art is work for you. Right now, it's a source of income. The ability to say no determines how much room in your schedule you have. And I mean, it does not saying no willy-nilly out of fear, but saying no, it's like, no, I do not have time, or no, this is not in my forte, no, this is, I can't do that. No, you're out of the time frame in which I allotted for commissions. You can purchase already created art, I can make your print, but in terms of commission, I, I can't do that. And I think that also that philosophy ties so much into other parts of life when it comes to your friends, when it comes to things that you do, especially with work as well. Well, there are certain times where you, you can't hang out with your friends. <laughs> like, being real, there are going to be certain times where you cannot hang out with your homegirls, you cannot go link Abby and sing and, and, you know, do your little, little party throwing up, whatever. You know, you can't link at piano, but you can't link at piano regardless because we're in quarantine. Well, we're not in quarantine no more, but, you know, we're, it's the pandemic. You know, we can't, we can't do those things that we used to do. And I think it's so important to remember that no is your strength. And the power of yes as well. Power, there's there is strength in the power of, in the word yes but there's also so much power in the word no there's so much power in the word no because it is you reclaiming that moment for yourself where if someone's asking something of you you can decline giving that piece of you at the time the same way if like for work it's like hey i know it's your day off but want to come in no Especially if that's a day where you've allotted for homework and time and things like that. And I can understand when things are money crunching. You're like, oh my God, I need the money, I need the money. I can't, you know, I can't just call out work. I, I need this extra day. But I'm also very exhausted and tired and I'm backed up on homework. You have to weigh your options here. It's like money can be made another day. This is technically my day off and made in my schedule. What can't be made another day can't make up these grades another day because I'm paying for this class or I need to graduate high school you know those are the things that can't be made up in a day those are things it's like you need to do them and get to be serious about them and, and sure about it so it takes a lot of no to get to the yes that you want but yeah I hope you guys like I don't know maybe I hope you're enjoying this chit chat maybe you're not maybe you are I sure hope so. I would hope you are. Because that would be kind of cool. And I can do more of these if you want. Let me know in the comments below. Another frequently asked question that shows up on my social media is how do I deal with other people not believing in the arts? And I think that's something that's going to be an ongoing battle until the end. <laughs> you know, I think it's so easy to take offense and to be upset or to be sad when someone doesn't appreciate your craft 
it's so easy to be hurt and to feel betrayed when someone is not respectful of your craft or not respectful of you. It's very easy to be upset about that. And it's understandable. But I think we also have to realize that there are so many people in the world that do appreciate art. And those are the people who like your posts every day. Those are the people who shout you out. Those are the people who are always wondering how you're doing when it comes to your art and wondering what's it like. And those are the people who respect your time and understand like, hey, when you say I have to get these commissions done, they're like, oh yeah, just draw it real quick and let's go. Like they don't say that. They're like, okay, I understand. I'll catch you another time. Those are the people who understand your pricing. You know, people who respect the arts respect the price. And I think that's a model I live by, by the way. People who respect the art respect the price. And those are the people who you not only want as customers, but those are the people you ultimately make for. You may not be making for them intentionally, but understand that going into the art realm, you're making for them. That's your clientele. Now you may have a certain niche or like a market that you're dedicated to, whether it's like a younger crowd or an older crowd, you know, high beasts, whatever. But you know, you you have to understand that that's the that's par for the course. I mean, that's a part of the package of being an artist. And I think the hate on art is all part of the package too, unfortunately. Where there are people who are never going to understand the purpose of art because they've only been taught, you know, that it's craft. Crafty. Glue things together and glare. They've never been taught. Or they never understood the concept of that everything that you've known to exist in this world was created as a, by an artist. You know, your rug, the, the rug, your desk, the wood crafts is art. You know, metal works is an art. I think there's a certain name for it, a something smith. It's not a locksmith. I was gonna say warlock, but I don't even think that's the right word either. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. You know, the person who decides the color of each pixel for your retina display is for an artist. The artist put those colors together and the artist recognize what colors are. You're like, oh yeah, that's in tech. But that's digital art. That's tech. Color is a part of art. The person who puts your commercials together. Film and media is an art. Movies are an art. The person who made your suit that you walk into Wall Street in every day. That's a fashion designer. That's an art. So there are people who really don't respect the arts in general because they don't have a good compass on what it means to have art in this world. And they will never really understand. And that's okay. And you have to understand that those people will never understand. And you accept that they never understand you move on. You don't let that be the reason why you stop making. You let that be the reason why you keep making. Because you know that with every person that doesn't appreciate, there's about five more that do. The person who respects the art respects the price. You don't want someone who disrespects your craft to want to commission you for nothing. They're not going to appreciate your price. They're trying to let you off. They're trying to talk you down from your worth because they don't think that your art is worth it because they don't think art is worth it in general. So these are some things you want to think about when you are, you know, dealing with people like that. It's like, Brush it off. It's gonna hurt for a little bit. And you're gonna make. It's gonna make you cuss. Trust me. I haven't had moments where I was cursing. But then you know, you let it go. You let it go. But as you guys can see, I'm coming to the close of this commission here, finishing up some last finishing touches, just adding my last bits of gold lacquer and some fine line work. I apologize. The canvas is off screen. As you can see, that gold is very reflective. I wouldn't give up a go. Man, go, baby. Okay. But, yeah. I'm going to let this vibe out and let you guys just relax and enjoy the rest of the video. And I'll chat with you guys towards the end.
so yeah, I'm coming to a close on this commission. I really loved how it came out. I actually had a really good reaction video that the client sent me for when they presented it to the person they gave it to. Um, as a graduation gift. Look at that, look at that gold reflecting. Look at me, look at it. Okay. And usually I seal it off with some varnish. Uh, this was done in acrylic with gold lacquer. Uh, gold enamel lacquer. Yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. And yeah. Bye.